Hey guys, what is going on? This is Fergie here, back for another video, and today uh, I'm bringing you guys kind of, not really a discussion video, but something I kind of want to show off. Um, and this doesn't just apply to um, the Nightblade. Uh, the Nightblade is just the only character that I have, Max, and I figured I could, um, you know, present it easier than I could any other um, class. So, I'm going to title this uh, video, Building Your Nightblade, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, obviously, you could put any other class name in there, and it would work just the same, but I just want to kind of discuss um, some really unique builds you can uh, do with your Nightblade um, or um, kind of inspire you to come up with a unique build for any other class really because uh, like I've said multiple times in the past the game really does allow you to um, really build the character however you want so um, you cannot let the skills or the moves of your class depict how you're going to play. Now uh, I can sound kind of hypocritical because my Nightblade is pretty traditional um, but you can change it very easily and um, I guess it is kind of unique in a few ways. Um, and I'll show you guys the, my finish up class. I know I did my last, I don't remember what level I was when I did the other um, guide, but <clears throat> this is where we're sitting right now. So um, I'm currently uh, veteran rank one. It, um, veteran levels are pretty lengthy. Um, I don't want to say it's grindy, but I just haven't had as much time to uh, level it up. So um, that's why it's taking me longer than it should. I'm still running the Thief, which is critical hit chance increased. Um, I'm rocking quite a bit of critical right now. Um, um, these are just uh, things for holding scrolls and Cyrodiil, so um, don't really pay attention to those. Emperor Lion, well, <clears throat> yeah, I, have, I haven't checked out Cyrodiil in a while, but who knows what's going on there. So um, this is what I finished my stat set, and I'm actually liking this a lot. I keep my stamina and magic of balance because I use them both pretty equally. Um, my health is lower, but um, it's better than zero. I know a lot of people that'll just slam it into magic or stamina or all into health. And I like this balance I have. I don't tend to die very much unless I really screw up and I deserve it. So that's what I'm running right now. I do have a little more magicka than stamina, um, but my stamina regen is much faster. Um, as you can see, than my magicka, just because I'm a, I'm a night blade. So um, my weapon critical is through the roof currently, and that's just with my bow. If I switch to... My second build, it goes all the way up to 75. Why? Wow. Why is it at 75? <laughs> it shouldn't be that high. Um, that's okay. Maybe there, maybe there's a stat change in the latest update. But, yeah, that's a lot of critical, and that's really what I'm going for with this build is a lot of critical. Um, I, if I can get critical on my bow, I can uh, shoot that up there as well. So um, I'll go ahead and show you guys the finished product of the build. I don't plan on changing much of it, um, and for whatever reason I do, I'll say that in a later video. But... Um, my dual wield bar is still exactly the same. I'm looking for something that could um, add critical, like a lot of critical um, pressure points. So I should only have six percent for that. Who knows? Um, I'm, I'm not complaining about it though. So um, my dual wield bar is still exactly the same. The only change from my previous build is on the bow bar. Um, I have uh, implemented snipe, uh, lethal arrow into the bar. Now this is an insane amount of damage, um, and it also poisons the target so it just kind of goes along with the bleed effects of this build so while my dual wield bar is just kind of uh, slash and hide or whatever uh, this is more about bleeds and survivability which is why I will use this if I assume I'm going to die in an engagement so um, a lot of big enemies or something like that um, if we look here at the weapons my dual wield is maxed out and my bow is just about maxed out so um, as you progress into these veteran ranks, I've got probably 15 skill points just in this veteran rank, so I've got four that I'm not even using right now. I'm planning on putting most of them into uh, these professions, but <clears throat> now that's for a later video when I do actually uh, start making it into the higher higher veteran ranks. But today I want to talk about um, all of these different skills um, that you have with the Nightblade and the different kind of builds you can, you can um, make with them, because I've seen a lot of different videos. Uh, where a lot of different people will make some very unique builds. Um, there will be vampire builds, there will be kind of warlock builds. Um, my kind of build is pretty popular um, amongst uh, Nightblades. And then some people even will like to run around with two hands. It's, it just kind of depends on how you want to play now. Um, assassination does work really, really um, implements just straight up damage. Now, nothing here really um, makes you have to be stealthy at all. Um, now, I've never used these bottom three moves. I just don't feel like it's worth putting them on my bar. But um, increased attack speed with light and heavy attacks. A marked target for death. That's really good if you're in a group. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that doesn't work too well on bosses. But 
um, and then blur um, is really good uh, survivability so assassination is really um, you can you can partner it with anything you can partner it with dual wielding like myself or throw in a two-hander um, because a lot of the two-handed moves are very good so I can totally see somebody uh, complementing assassination with a two-handed weapon uh, because it really it just it just focuses around hitting stuff now shadow on the other hand is more stealth based um, it's really kinda you know what you would think of if you made a nightblade um, path of, I have seen a lot of people use path of darkness uh, nowadays um, enemies in front of you take a lot of damage and it's a dot and increases uh, your movement speed so that's very nice um, aspect of terror is a really good crowd control and summon shade is is what it is it's a minion uh, if it would be permanent that'd be really cool but I can see how nightblades uh, wouldn't get a minion now um, with shadow um, I've seen a lot of people do a lot of different things now um, for vampires since vampires have their own bar and they implement some of those moves I've seen a lot of vampires pair with shadow and siphoning siphoning because um, I don't know if they like it to go along with the whole vampire feel or it actually is good synergy I think it's both um, but set shadow and siphoning um, for vampire builds is very good um, these moves down here I mean if you interchange a lot I don't typically ever switch out moves or anything even though I probably should um, the ultimate is also really good um, I've uh, used this ultimate on a different night blade and I like it a lot I just um, still like soul tether and deathstroke but consuming darkness is a very good move and really it can be uh, centered around any build as well I, I really have seen any weapon paired with a night blade and there's a lot of different ways to do it so um, with with shadow I've seen um, I've seen tanks I've seen nightblade tanks run uh, shadow moves and I have also seen two-handers uh, deal shadow moves now obviously there's dual wielding and bow I won't talk about that as much because that's what I'm doing and that's what you would think of when you think of nightblade I'm trying to get a little more unique here um, now siphoning is I've seen these kind of warlocky builds with siphoning so you can take um, light armor and a destruction staff or even a restoration staff and run siphoning now not only does some of the siphoning moves keep you alive uh, they can keep other people alive as well like the synergy for soul tether um, and not drain power something in here um, also heals uh, people around you so I've seen healers um, nightblade healers that do a very good job um, I've run through a whole dungeon with one of them that run a restoration staff and partner that with siphoning moves and especially the ultimate uh, can really do some some solid healing and do a little bit of damage at the same time um, if you're into WoW I'm thinking like a disc priest or something like that it's a really good um, it's a really good strategy and actually I, I've thought about doing that multiple times being a resto staff siphoning kind of warlock healer now if you want to go straight damage you can always take out the destruction staff and and go from there um, if you're not interested in the healing aspect and just keeping yourself alive um, I've also considered that that is a very good uh, build to run because siphoning the siphoning tree in general is good for self-healing swallow soul will keep you alive most of the time um, as well as crippling grasp um, is a good dot and then if you partner that with some bow moves like um, for me at least I partner with the bow bleeds because I like my whole bar to just be straight damage over time so now like I said siphoning can be uh, doubled with both staffs but I would say if you're gonna run siphoning to either go dual wield or bow with it or do the stats. I haven't seen a lot of people with one hands and shields or two hands run siphoning um, mostly just assassination or shadow um, if you're just like I said if you're just interested in melee damage um, assassination is definitely the way to go but anything else um, like shadow or siphoning is still gonna be a little more stealth oriented but you can um, configure it any way you want and really really change it up you don't have to play it traditionally like I do um, my my build doesn't really have a name, but if you search Nightblade builds, um, or maybe even unique Nightblade builds, um, you'll see a lot of really interesting things that people... Now, some of them might not be very viable anymore, either because either they were from the beta or launch, and they've been, you know, tweaked a little bit, but they're still pretty cool. Um, I've uh, seen one guy run around with a... who's a vampire um, with all siphoning moves, really taking advantage of the vampire moves. I wish I could show you guys that tree, but obviously I don't want to be a vampire. I refuse to uh, take that extra fire damage um, and screw with all the vampire stuff, so I'm not going to do that, but 
The vampire moves are very good paired with siphoning. I, I won't bash on it too much. Um, so if you're going to be a vampire, not only is a dark elf a really good decision for the fire resist, um, siphoning will keep you alive at the same time in all situations, uh, including Cyrodiil, for those of you who are uh, into that. And I'm going to be putting out Cyrodiil um, videos here soon. I'm, I still am figuring everything out myself and um, taking the time to figure it all out because Cyrodiil is huge. And <laughs> it takes like an hour to get across the whole thing, and uh, you know. So uh, I'll be getting to that, but uh, I think that's just going to be about it for me, guys. Um, like I said, really uh, play with the class. Um, uh, what you can do at max level or even below max level is go um, to the Shrine of Mara, or not the Shrine of Mara, one of the shrines um, in the capital city, and I'll show you guys where those are located right here, actually. Or for the Daggerfall Covenant, it's, that's only the Shrine of Mara. Um, the, I do, for one, know where the Ebonheart Pact one is. If you go to Deshin and Mournhold, right here we have the Shrine to Kine and Stun. Those are how you reset your attribute and skill points. So it's a cost, um, and it gets more expensive the more you level up. Uh, obviously, the more skill points you get, but it can be worth it if you really want to reset everything. Now, they're considering trying to implement something that can let you reset only a few skill points if you don't want to get rid of everything and pay all that money, but uh, we'll see what they do with that in the future. So really uh, play with your class, create a whole bunch of builds. Um, if anybody comes up with something really cool, be sure to tell, let me know in the comments. Um, I'll either try it out or check it out if you have a video of it or something. And um, that's going to be just about it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys with some other cool videos here pretty soon. Thanks.